Welcome. My name is Harry Tong. I'm a senior solutions architect from InterSystems. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the unique features behind the scene of uh, InterSystems Iris Data Platform. So hopefully after this session, you will know better uh, what Iris can do for you and why it has these uh, benefit or whatever features or performance gains, etc. So let's uh, start. What is InterSystem Iris Data Platform? It is a very high performance data management software. But we are not just another uh, data platform vendors, and many of them typically put a wrapper around a uh, couple of different uh, uh, open source products and offer you as a platform. We insist on developing our own unique intellectual properties on following key components. So let me highlight a few for you right now. First and foremost, we have a very efficient key value based storage mechanism. Actually, it's not just storage. The same key value representation, they both in memory as well as uh, on disk. And secondly, we have this uh, intelligent distributed cache with guaranteed consistency. So we, we will save you a lot of headaches bringing your own commercial or open source uh, cache solutions, then you have to synchronize between your data source and these uh, caches. We do that for you. And since we know the standard is the key, so we embrace all the standard APIs or languages or environments. So these are a few uh, highlighted here. But if a data platform is not highly reliable, resilient and secure, and uh, it offers uh, no value. That's my opinion. Then as a data platform, we also want to make it very easy for you or your applications that build on top of Iris can easily interoperate with other uh, systems no matter uh, inside your enterprise or also in the cloud with all the other uh, cloud uh, tools uh, the vendor offered, uh, the native uh, cloud tools as well as third-party cloud tools. So we offer building uh, interoperabilities. So as a result, Iris Data Platform allows you to build such mission-critical applications which you can do both concurrently transactional process and analytical process on one platform, on one set of data in one place. And we also offer you the uh, horizontal scalability and the elasticity. So you can basically let many of your uh, customers or partners to access this data from a single place. You, as a result, not only you have this high performance, highly scalable, elastic, but you have very low total cost of ownership. So that's the summary of what Iris Data Platform is. And now let's jump into our first uh, pillar, right? So what, what Iris, why Iris is so unique? Is this highly efficient key value store? It's not only store data, it's also index data as well, based on the same key value store. So in Iris, we call it globals. This key value store is so flexible. Oh, by the way, we have this key value store even long before other key value NoSQL vendors had their key value store. So we actually had many years ahead of them. So that give us the opportunity to enrich this key value store. So it's no longer just another key value store. Instead, we actually make it a feature rich. That means you can 
fundamentally store data in key values, but you can impose, we allow you to impose uh, schemas or metadata on top of any key values. So you can access that data uh, in totally different ways and uh, like uh, treat them as SQL tables or treat them as objects or treat them as an uh, JSON, etc. But the key is that there's only one copy of that key value. That's the key. I'm not asking to duplicate them, right? To, because once you create duplicate, you are creating a lot of problems. Actually, I have another session talking about the challenges of CDC, change data capture, but that's as a different story. But here I want to emphasize, if possible, use Iris as a to simplify your architecture and more important to simplify your uh, data uh, uh, storage. So you only have one copy of data. We will do whatever necessary uh, uh, distribute uh, caching for you among others. But the, the truth is that there's a single truth. There's only one copy of data. So that's the one uh, takeaways uh, of this uh, key value store. And since it's key value store, so all the keys, all, all the, we call the subscript. So you can have a single key or composite key, many subscripts. All these keys are automatically uh, indexed and sorted. Because it, the, the nature of the key value store, they have to sort by these keys or composite keys. And not only that, all the keys itself, each of the key will be automatically encrypted and compressed. So we actually, the data stored in Iris is very normalized. It's normalized, okay? We don't duplicate, not necessarily unless you want us to, but the, by design, we don't duplicate data. And then even on the payload of our key value, right? I talk about key, then the value is the payload. The way that we store data is also very efficient. And so we can basically uh, not only the same key value representation can be stored on disk and also in memory very efficiently. And uh, as a result, you can do a lot of things with the IRS. And I already mentioned that you can do a transactional and analytical different workload and access the, the same data in totally different format, relational tables, objects, JSONs, etc. But because the simplicity of this underlying uh, key value store, we also actually allow you to achieve very high performance. So that means you can process uh, your data, transactional data with the tran transaction integrities at a very high speed. And some of our largest customers that doing, uh, they can sustain at like hundreds of millions of transactions a second. And one of the largest bank, investment bank in the world, they are using Iris to process all their trading messages from stock trade to uh, uh, the bonds, which is fixed income, and also uh, foreign exchange FX and fusion options and uh, mortgage back security, anything you name it, multi asset class. Everything runs on top of Iris and uh, about like uh, billions of messages a day. So that's the power of our iris is thanks to this unique feature this unique key value store but very rich features and the second pillar of the uh, iris is this uh, distributed cache because nowadays in modern uh, architecture uh, because i'm myself is also a solution architect so if without Iris, typically just like any other architect, I would say, okay, you need a relational database. Then in, in, in order for you to perform or scale, you may need a, a distributed cache. And then you may also, if some of the your relational database is not capable of handling your large historic data, you may need a third, like uh, say a data warehouse or dump it into data lake. So as you can see, you already, we already talked about three or four different uh, uh, components, those moving parts. So as an architect and as well as developers, uh, and you have to worry about how to keep the data uh, 
in sync among these three or four different components. But with IRIS, our design philosophy, our design principles, we want to simplify the technology stack. We want to offer you these features in one piece of software, which is IRIS. The IRIS, by the way, is not multiple software, it's just one binary. It's one set of binary. We come, we built the IRIS binary every night, but we do uh, agile development, but it's a single copy of binary. So a single copy of binary, depends on how you deploy them, they can, and or how you configure them, they can transform to different uh, uh, features, or in some case, many other features in, in one place. And so one of these features is this distributed cache. Okay, so let's jump into it. So what is this dis distributed cache? This unique feature is called Enterprise Cache Protocol. So what we offer you is that uh, we basically offer you this distributed cache but Iris will make sure the data in any of these cache nodes, they are consistent and coherent with the, the, the rest of the, uh, the, the, the data set. So they are not the stale data, they are not the replicated data. They are actually a real-time consistent data. We guarantee the consistency. And the, the other thing is that the, when, when you do these uh, distributed cache, and we also have other ways, optimizations, we, such as we don't just blindly push change data to every copy of cache. That's not how uh, uh, CDC work under the hood of IRIS. And uh, it's a way uh, to uh, inefficient. So IRIS will actually do very efficiently uh, distribute the cache and notify whoever subscribed to a a, a, a piece of data in these form of caches so we can make sure they get a consistent view of the, the, the single copy of master data. Because each cache node itself was designed for the cloud and also for containers, so you can actually deploy them on VMs, deploy them you know, inside the Docker container, the Kubernetes, and they can spin them up and down and uh, without any uh, uh, like a problem to your system. And so it's, that's how the ECP, our uh, distributed cache, will give you this uh, elasticity. So you don't have to overbuild your infrastructure for large uh, mission critical systems. So for example, the, uh, the same uh, uh, example I gave it to you in the previous uh, slide about this large investment bank, right? They handle uh, billions of messages a day uh, on IRIS. But uh, they don't have to overbuild their system. So when when they, all the system is was on Iris, uh, they can basically uh, save their hardware uh, infrastructure costs by seventy percent because of these kind of efficiency in our core uh, data engine and also the efficiency this uh, distributed cache will provide you. So you don't have to overbuild your hardware and let you to. Uh, uh, they say that's the true uh, lower the cost of your TCO. So the previous uh, feature plus this one, the in combination, they will lower your total cost of ownership. So let's see some examples. So here is another uh, investment bank. Uh, this bank has a, a reference data which contains a lot of uh, financial benchmark data like uh, Dow Jones, uh, S&P, and NASDAQ. And, and also the bank itself also created a lot of its own uh, private uh, benchmark, uh, which they don't tell you it's their secret source, so they, they have their own secret compositions. But they recalculate these uh, reference data every day. So every day you have a whole new set of these reference data. So then they want to store these reference data as much as possible. So this benchmark shows, although it's in a, a small scale, but the, in, in just four VMs, a iris cluster was able to store 10 times more data than other uh, competing technology. They also look at a pure in-memory distributed database, and there are also a, a combination of in-memory database with uh, on this columnar store, 
then the, the, the number of vendor C is a more traditional data warehouse, so which is pure on this columnar store. So as you can see, Iris actually handled 10 times more data than any of them. But the more importantly, if you look at the bottom of the chart, right, and the, the, the pale green one is the Iris response time. As you can see, Iris responded no matter how many concurrent users on the system running complex queries against their reference data set. And Iris always gives you the sub-second. Actually, it's in measured in the millisecond. Although the reason my scale, vertical scale, has to be the 9,000 millisecond because many of the competitors has to spend nine seconds. So that's why I obscure the whole chart. But Iris is in the single or lower double digit millisecond. That's the performance Iris gives to you. And as other vendors, they either the, the, the response time will shoot up, or in some of them, they're simply not capable to finish the queries. You know, some of the queries are so complex, and uh, as soon as they go beyond like a 50 concurrent user, they just like uh, the query just stop like the return result. Right? So these are the power of uh, Iris, which give you uh, the, uh, the, the high performance and with uh, a lot of uh, like uh, room to grow. And since we are still here, I also want to emphasize something about, uh, because I'm looking at this, I realize uh, this test was done on so-called sharding Iris cluster. So uh, sharding itself is not a unique feature to Iris. There's many uh, uh, database management software has this kind of capability. Some of them call it sharding, some of them call it partitioning, right? So it's basically the idea is you have a dedicated uh, the data node with store a portion of the data. So if you divide the data in, in four shards in this case, and then each shard will have like a, a quarter of your whole data set. And then in the vendor A case, they divide by eight shards, then each of them will have one eighth of the data set. So sharding is not unique to Iris. But I want to point out why Iris can give you such kind of good performance right here. Is that the, remember the second pillar of IRIS data platform is this ECP, Intelligent Distributed Cache. That one, we apply that one automatically to our sharding, to our partition. Think about that. Sharding, by definition, is so called share nothing. That means each shard will only keep a copy of its own data. It has no knowledge of the rest of data, period. So share nothing. Each of them, they don't share anything. They just only know their data. So this will only work well when you have all the data are co-located. It's called a co-sharding strategy. But that's not true in many cases. So in many cases, especially reference data, I'm glad right? this here I'm going to talk about reference data. The reference data itself, in many cases, cannot be co-sharded. See, because you cannot define a clear co-sharding key. You know, normally, if you're talking about account or positions, balance, or transactions, you always say, let's shard everything based on the account ID, customer ID, or whatever you have it. So that means each of these tables, the account table, the balance table, position table, transaction table, they all somehow can be linked to the account ID. Then all the information from all these tables will be stored in one place or for that particular account ID. So that's called code sharding. But in reference data, you, you cannot do that. You cannot say, okay, you can say, okay, if I have symbols, I, I will let's code shard by symbol. Fine. But the, guess what? My other query coming, I'm not looking at symbol. I'm looking at the QSIP. So now you're screwed. So these are the nature of the, the, the limitations of sharding. Well, how we beat the competition here is that the, when Iris does sharding, it on automatically enables ECP among these shards. So it's kind of a share nothing for sharding, but ECP is share everything. So each shard will automatically can have the visibility of the, the rest of the data set stored physically in other shards because it, it's there cache uh, node, so it can subscribe to any of them. Then because of the ECP, we, we're very efficient, so we don't have to duplicate the whole data to you. So whatever 
it's your use pattern among others. We can intelligently distribute it for you. So you can do these so-called pulse shot join very efficiently. So here's the proof. So again, the ECP is the differentiator, not shot. Okay, so now let's talk about the, the third pillar, which is our integration platform. So we have this built-in. So we know is that the, at the beginning I said, yes, yeah, so we can uh, collapse many of your uh, technology stacks. I give you an example. We already can collapse your uh, distributed cache with your RDBMS or maybe multiple data stores. So you have a, a SQL data store like Oracle or Postgres. So you have a NoSQL database like uh, Mongo, DB, or Dynamos, or you have a data warehouse product like uh, Oracle Data Warehouse, uh, 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 Sybase uh, IQ, and uh, uh, Redshift AWS, among others. So you can, as as architect, I always advise my customers to collapse these uh, different uh, uh, technology stacks to a single stack like Iris as much as possible. So that's my recommendation. On the other hand, I recognize it is not possible to replace everything, put everything into Iris. You already have other legacy systems. Uh, and then you also have, you have your partners or customer, whatever systems you have no control. So you need to very easily interoperate with the system, integrate your iris based solutions with the system no matter within your enterprise on-prem or nowadays everybody is uh, uh, putting their mission critical applications uh, uh, in the cloud so in the cloud you also need to interoperate with not only the data you have in your enterprise but now you have all the cloud vendors and third party vendors tools data and etc so you want to very easy to interoperate with so what we offer you is that, yes, yeah, so we have this features built in, so it's not add on, so our test is out of the box. So one other thing I want to highlight is that nowadays, uh, the way that you build the next generation of uh, uh, any mission critical system, there's a couple of things. First is API, so it must be API based, and then of the rest for API. So basically it's the API economy. And uh, Iris has a full lifecycle API management building, so you can use it. And uh, we also have many of these so-called dynamic gateways, which inside Iris you can easily uh, interact with your other, not even uh, uh, data spaces, even your applications. So you can interact with your Java, with your .NET, or Python, or Node.js, etc. So you, you can just say that the, the two uh, seamlessly uh, interact with each other. And I can give you an example re regarding to this API. So API economy is very powerful. So remember the example I gave you to the, at the very beginning, this uh, global investment bank, they process like billions of messages, they trade messages, right? But that's not what was the case uh, a few years back. That time they were running uh, on their own uh, 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 in-house developed uh, uh, system. I mean, especially in terms of the data management, they built everything in-house. The reason that time there was no commercial or open source product can meet their uh, uh, demand and on the volume and on the latency side. So they built their own in-house solution, in-memory solution. But then the problem with those things is that uh, they are very like uh, they're not stable, unstable. And so as soon as you exhaust the memory, the whole system just uh, uh, crashed. So you cannot uh, like uh, uh, stop your trading because you run out of memory. When we approach this large uh, customer, uh, now a large customer of ours, and uh, ask someone to rewrite their entire trading system is almost as someone to climb the Mount Everest, right? It's a taunting task. But what I show to them is not how, how great Iris is or whatever. Instead, I just show them one API. I said, look, 
look at this API. It's native to your language. I think they use a C++. So I just give them the API, I C++ API. So look at the API. Yeah, look simple, okay. I told them, I can guarantee you this API will only cost you 50 microseconds. So how difficult it is for you just to put this singular API into your 10,000 lines of C++ code? They said, not, not difficult, okay. And so we did a success POC and then they, they implemented it in just a couple of months. So what this API does is that once they, they put that into their existing trading systems, all of a sudden, every message through their trading system, Iris got a copy. But I already told you all the goodies of Iris can give it to you, right? If the, you can put your object in, because we store in, in one like a key value structure, but we project to SQL automatically. So they just keep on streaming their object in via the streaming API. And uh, all of a sudden, Iris started to build up their entire trading data set. I did not tell you is that they also have 250 applications globally with thousands, if not tens of thousands users on these 250 applications hitting their trading system. That's one of the other reasons that trading system became so unstable. It's not just you cannot read or write enough to the memory. You also may exhaust CPU because there's so many users on your system and they're also asking read the memory here. I don't think these uh, applications do update or insert that, that often, but uh, they typically it's a, it's a read or you can call it analytical workload. But once I give them one streaming API, they offload the entire data sets to Iris. They can redirect their 250 applications to this Iris cluster instead of their own uh, trading system and get the, the real time exactly consistent and result. So it's basic that streaming API is the pressure relieving valve. And once they put it in place, they release the, the pressure of their trading system. They offload that to Iris. But since Iris, I also told you it, it can horizontal scale without distributed cash or cash node. So they can handle these tens of thousands of users from the 250 apps easily without overbuilding their uh, infrastructure. So within just a matter of months, as soon as they implement the streaming API of Iris, they stabilize their entire trading system, no more crashes, right? And then over the course of about three years, they rebuild everything on top of Iris. So that's the advice I told you, I give it to my customers, say, hey, just collapse your technology there. Avoid duplicate data set, which they did. So now everything is running on top of the same set of Iris and the cluster in both the, the, the transaction process as well as the uh, query process. Because the, again, inside the Iris cluster nowadays is that the, the transition process is directly happening on the, a, the data node using our streaming APIs and the query still we offload them to these cache nodes. So Iris was never a problem to begin with, but the, now they took the full advantage of Iris, both our uh, key value store, which are the globals, where they're streaming these uh, messages directly to our key value store. And they're also taking the full advantage of distributed cache and running full SQL on these cache nodes. So that's the power of APIs. So that's what I want to highlight. And before I move to my last uh, segment of this talk, uh, I want to just use this one as a, uh, as like a, as a, a springboard, if you will. Iris is designed cloud first. So when we designed Iris about four years ago, Iris were designed for the cloud, in the cloud first. Although it can deploy on-prem too, so that's I want to highlight as well. So when we design Iris, yes, it is very flexible, so it can deploy on all the cloud. I list a bunch of uh, these uh, cloud vendors on the bottom. And uh, so you have a single set of data, single set of API, blah, 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 and also very easy to deploy and it's fully containerized. So, very few really database vendors uh, containerize their uh, 
databases. What we do, we not only containerize our data nodes, of course, we containerize our cache node, and we'll fully support the Kubernetes. Okay, so you can have Kubernetes operator on top of uh, Iris containers. But just the uh, cloud, you can deploy it on every cloud, also known as cloud neutrality. It's not enough. Because most open source products also said, oh, we do the same thing. You can just deploy us anywhere. You can spin up a, either a container or, or a, a Unix Red Hat uh, or CentOS, and you can run the open source uh, software. That's true. That's the last pillar I want to talk about, about Iris, is the power of vertical integration. So what is vertical integration? I think you all know very well because you love the product from industry leaders like Apple and Tesla so much because both of these firms, they do vertical integration very well. So does InterSystems. So when we design Iris, we have this design principle of the vertical integration. So that means we want to in is optimize Iris at every level, at the data platform level, at the uh, database level, then at the, uh, the API or, or language level, and at the operating system level, and then at the hardware level. Then especially on the hardware level, we are not only say, okay, uh, are you how many cores do you have? How much memory you have? No, we ask deeper questions. What kind of CPU do you have? Intel, AMD, nowadays ARM, or specifically what model of CPU do you have? What instruction set that particular CPU supports? Very important. Then we, we invoke these, uh, take advantage of these hardware features in terms of CPUs. Same thing to memory. Well, nowadays, memory is no longer just the, the, the DRAMs. The uh, Intel and the Micron technology has this, uh, they have this uh, uh, Optane, which is kind of, you can configure as, as DRAM or you can configure it as like a solid state uh, hard drive or a combination of them. So we take, Iris takes the full advantage of these memory technology too. Networking, again, since ECP, which are the issue cache, heavily rely on network. So we want to take the full advantage of the, the modern network protocol can offer to us, both in the hardware as well as software. Last but not least, even in the storage. The storage is so critical because Iris has its own storage. I told you the key value store has the, the same key value pair, exists the same format in memory as well as on storage. But the storage technology nowadays also evolving very rapidly. So we work closely with our partners. So I would give an example on AWS. Right now we have, Iris has a storage uh, strategy. We can transparent to you, but we we'll take advantage, we will say for these hot data, we'll put in more expensive uh, EBS volumes. Then for the cold data, we'll put a much cheaper S3 bucket for you, but transparent. But as soon as you need to access these S3 the data on S3, we are going to fetch it for you. But then if you access them more, we are going to ping them probably in uh, EBS instead of uh, putting them back in S3. So all these kind of things, right? So these things add up. This vertical integration will add up. So I can give you a concrete example. Uh, AWS announced their own ARM-based uh, silicon and then the uh, EC2 instance built on top of their own ARM-based uh, silicon called the Graviton2. And so we are a strategic partner with AWS, so we get early access to their uh, Graviton2 uh, instances. So we optimized Iris. We not only compiled our Iris binary our ARMs, actually that's not our first time compiling our Iris our ARMs. You might remember back when Apple create their own silicon on arms and on, uh, in those uh, iPad and iPhones. Our developer already compiled uh, Iris for iPad, although we never released it, but we just for fun, we, we know we can compile our arms. So now 
when wherever COM2 was available to us, we not only compiled Iris on Graviton2 for ARMS, but we also apply all these uh, hardware, all these actually uh, vertical integrations, optimizations on Graviton2. As a result, the same uh, version of Iris on AWS, on comparable EC2 uh, instances, one is the Intel x86-64 or AMD uh, chipset, on the other side is the uh, Graviton2 uh, ARM-based chipset. Iris on Graviton2 ARM-based chipset is 30% more. Uh, you gain 30% more performance compared to the uh, Intel-based chipset, uh, same EC2 uh, configuration. So that's the power of vertical integration. So I think uh, I talked about all the uh, four pillars of uh, our uh, IRIS data platform. So now let, let me just uh, do a quick recap. So the, the takeaways, uh, why IRIS can give you such a unique uh, features and more values, right? I want to reduce your total cost of ownership. I want to give you the, the, the time to market fast, uh, be very uh, responsive, responsiveness and also the agility, right? So IRIS give you these because we have this unique key value based uh, store storage strategy but we're not just limited to the key value we give you the multi-model give you the relation give you the object give you the json give you the x value what do you name it the second pillar again is our distributed cache you don't have to use another third party cache to in your uh, architect or in your infrastructure so you can reduce like uh, 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 these moving parts and we are going to make the cache, the data automatically populated, synchronized, and very efficient, high performing efficient. So it gives you the elasticities and scalabilities of your system without occurring a high cost. The lower the TCO, that's the key, right? Then in terms of integration, I actually give you two examples. One is the horizontal integration, so you can use us to integrate with any other uh, software, either use APIs, use adapters, use the messages, you name it. So that's our horizontal uh, integration. But then the last I also emphasize, we can achieve all these three above is because we do the vertical integration up to the chipset. I give that example at all. Right? So that's basically the key takeaway. So I think uh, this will conclude my presentation. So stay safe. I will see you next year at the Global Summit, hopefully in person. Thank you.